This week has been a bit of a double whammy in terms of people reaching out with comments and questions. Not only, of course, do I work here at the Mortarboard Network, but because of my previous role on Netflix's docuseries Last Chance U, I stay in touch with people in the collegiate sports community. Both podcast listeners and coaches alike are preoccupied with the decision by the NJCAA that most sports are now pushed to the spring. At the four-year level, the Southern Athletic Association, a Division III conference, has suspended all athletic competition through the fall season. But the SEC has said that the league will wait until later in July to make a determination on how to proceed on the football season, and has said that postponing football is not a priority at this point, the commissioner said. The Big 12 and the ACC, college football's other two Power Five conferences, are also choosing to wait until late July to make a decision regarding the 2020 season. The Big Ten has announced that all the league's members would only play conference opponents this fall, and the Pac-12 followed suit. The Ivy League became the first Division I conference to cancel all fall sports, and that move began a sort of domino effect followed by the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, the Patriot League, Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference, and others. The gorilla in the room is, of course, football for two reasons. First, it involves the most students, because football teams are typically the largest athletic team the school has, sometimes larger than all their other athletic teams combined. And it typically plays in the biggest venues in front of the biggest crowds, and therefore draws the most revenue. I got asked a series of questions about the NJCAA's decision to postpone football to the spring, and I'll just take each of them in turn and give brief answers. The first is whether it was the right decision to make. Of course it was. There's absolutely no sense in which the spread of this virus is under control, and therefore contact sports, which violate most of the social distancing guidelines we have that are designed to prevent the spread of the virus, obviously aren't appropriate for the situation we find ourselves in, especially if this sport involves a lot of spectators. Second, I'm asked whether it means that these sports won't be held at all That is, will these sports first be pushed to the spring and then abandoned altogether? Nobody knows the answer to that question. The question of what schools do in the spring is really entirely dependent on what happens during the fall. If the numbers improve to the point where we can feel safe engaging activities that carry some risk, then sports will probably continue. But the numbers obviously do have to improve, substantially, for contact sports to be responsibly held and for people to go watch them. Whether enough citizens, young or old, will behave in the ways that are known to slow the spread of the virus to achieve an overall decrease in cases remains to be seen, and it's anyone's guess. We don't have to wonder whether the spread of this disease can be managed. Plenty of countries have done that. And unless you think somehow those countries are fundamentally different from us, remember that there are individual states within our country that have managed the spread of this disease. The science is clear. What is not clear is whether we have the will to meet our individual responsibility to other people. Third, people ask me what the impact on enrollment will be at the community college level. This is no small question. About half of all college students in the United States are in community colleges. If we assume that the sports that are moved to spring will actually be held in the spring, then this can only benefit the enrollment of two-year colleges. The reason is that the students now have an incentive to remain in college in the spring without dropping out and without transferring to a four-year school. Previously, in a sport like football, the spring semester presented an option to stay or go. A student could finish up at the community college, graduate, and then continue on their academic path, or they could go to spring training at their future school. And enough students do that second option to substantially and negatively affect spring enrollment at community colleges, especially at small community colleges with a substantial student-athlete enrollment. If just 50 football players who would have left instead choose to remain at a small rural school with 1,000 students, that 5% bump in enrollment will come at a very welcome time, when it's very likely that many colleges will be struggling. So I think from an enrollment standpoint, and thus a revenue standpoint, This decision is actually welcome news for any two-year college that has athletics. I hope this information was helpful to you, and I hope that you are safe and healthy. I look forward to talking with you again next week.